When you modify content in an image, you are making an adjustment. And there are two main ways to make an adjustment in Photoshop. You can use the image menu to choose image and then adjustments and apply a variety of adjustments that way. Or you can use adjustment layers like we talked about in the previous example. And so what I want to do is I want to show you both ways and talk about why one way may be more advantageous than another. Uh, and that might change depending on what your goals are. And so I want to show you how to create adjustments using the image menu and adjustment layers. So the first thing that you need to know, let's grab a different image here. The first thing that you need to know is that anytime you apply an adjustment via the image menu, it will be applied destructively by default, meaning it's going to override the layer that you're working on. And so right now I only have one layer, it's a background layer. I cannot edit that layer unless I unlock it, so I'll click the little lock, and then I'm going to override my layer. In our class, we want to practice using non-destructive editing, and the very first form of non-destructive editing is to duplicate the layer that you're editing so that you have a copy. In case you mess it up or destroy it, I can always come back to layer zero. So I'm going to apply my edits to the layer zero copy, make sure that that layer is selected, and then you can apply adjustments by going to the image menu and then choose adjustments. And you'll see a lot of these same options were available on the layers panel in our previous video. There are some additional ones that you can play around with like HDR toning that are not available via the adjustment layer. And so sometimes you have to apply adjustments via the image menu. But let's do hue and saturation. We did that in the previous video, right? So I can do the same thing. I can slide the hue slider to change the colors in the image. And I actually kind of think that looks pretty cool. Um, I can increase the saturation or decrease the saturation depending on what I'm trying to achieve. And I can make an adjustment. But if I look at my layers panel, that layer is now forever changed. If I wanted to go back to the original, I would have to delete the edited layer. And then I could come back to the original. There's one workaround for this. If you convert any layer to be a smart object, whenever you apply an edit to that, whether it's a filter like we learned in a previous lesson or an adjustment, those adjustments are applied non-destructively. So the second way to make sure that this edit is applied non-destructively is to right click on the document and choose convert to smart object. Now, if I go back to the image menu and choose adjustments and let's do Let's do levels because we did levels in the previous one. If I apply a levels adjustment to this, I want to move my slider this way to brighten up the image. When I make my levels adjustment, it's now applied separately from the layer. I can turn toggle or turn the eyeball on or off to make the layer visible or invisible and then it's applied non-destructively. I could always delete the smart uh, filter that's attached to the smart object and then I don't have to see it anymore. And while we're at it, let me show you how to make a levels adjustment because that's one of the easiest adjustments that you can make that will create a huge impact in your design. So whether you apply your levels adjustment via the layers panel and an adjustment layer, or you come up to image adjustments and levels, uh, for now, I just want you to look at the histogram. The histogram shows you where the lightness and darkness in the image lies. The sliders that are below it are essentially saying, this is the black slider on the left-hand side, any colors that fall from the black slider to the left will be 100% black. And so as I slide the dark slider to the right, the image gets darker because all the colors that fall within the histogram to the left of the slider are forced to be 100% black. The same idea applies with the white slider. If I want to have 100% white in my document, any colors that fall to the right of the slider will be 100% white. And so all the lighter colors in the document, as I slide this to the right, get forced to be 100% white. What you want to do is you want to set your darkest white, I'm sorry, your darkest black and your lightest white and then make a mid-tone adjustment. So what I want to do is I just want to pop the darkness a little bit to the right to make sure, and I'm only looking at the dark areas right now on the castle. I'm happy with the amount of darkness in the castle. And then on the right, I'm going to slide this slider to the left 
until I have all the whites that I like. And I'm paying attention to the sky because the sky is getting a little bit blown out over here. So I think right about there, I might be happy with that. Then once we have our darkest point and our lightest point, then we make our major adjustment by sliding the midtone slider. So if I slide the midtone slider to the right, more and more the midtone values will be black because I'm sliding to the right. And if I slide the midtone to the left, more and more will be white. So what I want to do is just pop it to the left a little bit until I'm happy with the overall look. And then if I, if I look at my result and I think, oh, there's too much white, or there's too much black, I can come back to my white and black sliders and I can move them more into position. And then because I've applied this to a smart object, I can always toggle the before and after to see the result of my edit. Okay, so now that we have learned how to apply an adjustment via the image menu and to do it via a smart object, let's talk about adjustment layers. So let's grab a new image here, let's zoom out a little bit. Adjustment layers apply all the same edits that are available on the image menu. They just apply them non-destructively by default. I like to call it the black and white cookie. It reminds me of Seinfeld episode, um, but it's a little circle that's half black and half white. And if you push it, you can choose any one of these to apply an adjustment layer. I'm going to choose gradient map because it's kind of a funky adjustment to apply. Once you choose the adjustment layer that you would like to apply, you must use the properties panel to modify the adjustment. Some of the adjustments do nothing by default until you make a decision. For the gradient map, it uses whatever gradient I had chosen previously. What I can then do is I can click through different options on the gradients to see if there's something that I like better for my gradient map. If I like the colors but I don't like the way they are, I could reverse them and I can do a number of different things. So let's apply a gradient map to a, a different image. Let's see how it applies. So we'll hit the little black and white cookie, choose gradient map from the flyout menu. And then we can choose. So see this one, it's definitely inverted. And so we could reverse the colors and get a, a better look to our design. Let's apply a few more. So let's bounce back to this image. I'm gonna delete that gradient map uh, let's do let's do a black and white adjustment layer. The black and white adjustment layer is interesting because it gives you a black and white image without actually taking the color out of your image. It's a really bad idea to delete the color. Um, so if you can make your image black and white without actually removing the original colors, you always have them to come back to. But what I really like about the black and white adjustment layers is that you can choose these different presets which create different versions of a black and white image. You can click through these and see if there's one or more that you like, like I, I think this one looks great, the green filter. You can even customize. So if you think back to the original colors in your image, the sky is really blue, right? There's probably a lot of blue and a lot of cyan in the image. So if I adjust the cyan sliders, I can make all the cyan in the image darker or I can make all the cyan in the image lighter. And so I can customize so I can customize how my black and white image ends up looking in the finished design. Okay, I would like you to practice applying adjustments non-destructively. Try to apply an adjustment to a smart object via the image menu, and then also apply adjustments via the black and white cookie or the adjustment layer icon at the bottom of the layers panel. I haven't demoed every single one, but what I would like you to do is to click through and then see what's on the properties panel and start playing around with the options.